our next speaker is Christian from uh, Technische Universität Darmstadt and also Delft, I'm told. Okay. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Hi. Can you hear me, Big Ben? Yeah? I, I, okay, good. All right. Okay, I am Christian. Um, I wanted to talk about our concept of sensor motor maps in a hopping model. Um, and as you probably all know, um, even during uh, like very easy motion tasks, such as vertical hopping, for example, um, we do use a lot of sensory information throughout the motion performance. We also rely on the body, body mechanics. We also use a couple of muscle groups. Um, and also on the motor control side, uh, there are higher centers from cortical areas and being involved, but also the spinal cord uh, with reflex and CPG. CPGs, um, all of that contribute to the motion execution. However, we know that um, during, for example, very simplistic or very repetitive and optimized movements, biomechanical template models have been successfully been applied um, in order to well, replicate the human movement um, and to study the uh, fundamental mechanics um, of that motion, for example. We suggest that also the neuromuscular control part can be mimicked by such neuromuscular template models um, to further study their principles um, in you know, a very simplistic manner. However, I think that's very important that, um, and it also pretty much aligns to what Andy Rina suggested yesterday, uh, that these um, you know, neuromuscular templates models, um, that these also have a matching dimensionality, a matching level of detail uh, compared to the biomechanical template models. So um, we further explored that um, with a very simplistic neuromuscular uh, model, um, the model from Geyer et al. Um, that model consists of a point mass over here um, and two massless um, segments. And um, here we have on the knee uh, a muscle tendon unit um, with uh, incorporated uh, muscle properties. The muscle tendon unit is able to generate an extension knee torque during the stance phase of vertical hopping. In order to generate appropriate motor commands, um, we used a feedback model. And the feedback model would um, use uh, the muscle fiber length, the muscle fiber velocity, as well as the muscle force. Uh, these feedback pathways are then blended by um, weighting factors and finally by a summation block to generate a sensory signal. By constraining the values of these weighting factors to values in between 0 and 1, and by the condition that we um, limit um, the sum of these to be equal to 1, so this one here, uh, we can transform um, this three-dimensional uh, space into a two-dimensional one, right? Okay, we then use that um, actually to visualize the solution space into two dimensions, um, and we use uh, a triangle for that. So the triangles are a little bit hard to read, so I will walk you through that. Um, first, let's consider the outer corners. So what we have here is force feedback in orange, velocity feedback in, uh, what is it, purple, and length feedback in green. Um, these denote actually the isolated contribution of that particular feedback, right? So 100% force feedback, for example. However, all the points within the triangle uh, represent a specific um, composition of all feedbacks being involved. And the more you deviate from the corners, um, the less that particular feedback is involved to generate um, the motor command, right? So for example, when we walk along this line here, uh, we start at 100% and we reduce it until, for example, here we have like a uniform blending where all feedbacks have one-third uh, contribution in relation to each other. Okay, is that clear so far? Good. Um, all right, before we jump to the, to the results, I want to first, um, well, explain what we actually expected from these simulations. So um, the first expectation that we had was to see compact and coherent solution spaces. Um, so why? Um, actually because we think that uh, if we would see uh, such um, solution spaces, so, um, so to say island solutions, right? They have a gap in between, they are distributed somehow. Um, we would expect that actually this kind of solution space would be very hard to control, or at least it would be more effortful. Because you really need to fine tune how the blending is actually processed um, during a movement performance. So that was, was not what we expected. 
Secondly, um, we thought that there would be pathway-specific motion features because all the pathways that we use um, consider different information about the state of the muscle. And finally, um, we thought about consistent um, or consistency um, all of, of the topologies, so the solution spaces, so to say, uh, even when we change the operation point. Okay, with that in mind, let's jump to the uh, results. So what you see here is on the left-hand side, um, this is the performance map uh, where the hopping height is, is uh, visualized, and on the right-hand side, um, the efficiency map with the uh, efficiency of the model. Uh, the efficiency was defined as the mechanical output divided by the metabolic input. Okay. Um, the colored areas actually denote um, simulations um, where the model would predict uh, steady state behavior over at least 50, 50, um, well, uh, 50 hops. In the white area here, um, the model would predict um, performance uh, or motions in which uh, it would land and then eventually settle in like a standing posture, right? So no collapsing, um, no falling down, just standing in the end. Okay. So um, the first thing that we can see, um, if we look here on the left hand side, um, is that stable solutions could be found in areas where force feedback was most dominant, um, but also where length feedback was most dominant, and in the areas in between. However, here only small contributions of the velocity feedback um, is used to predict the simulation. Okay, so first thing, we can see one coherent solution space. Um, so that was actually what we expected as well. Good. Um, secondly, if we look at the optima um, of the two maps, um, we can see that most performant hopping, this, mode, uh, this red dot, um, is very close to force feedback. On the other hand, highly efficient hopping, which would be that red dot here, uh, is very close to the length feedback. Um, and in addition to that, we see that velocity feedback did not generate stable hopping solutions. So the fact that actually velocity feedback did not result in, in steady state hopping uh, was something that uh, was a little bit surprising for us. Um, finally, um, we do see, uh, we, we think of it uh, kind of like a security mechanism. So um, on the one hand side, or let me, let me give you an example. Um, I, I, I would like to use, uh, you know, car pedals. Um, so in your car, you use a gas pedal to control the performance uh, of the system. Um, outside the US, however, uh, we use uh, a, gear, a clutch pedal um, to shift gears um, to, you know, allow for efficient driving. Um, and in addition to that, we use a brake um, to actually re well, respond to, I don't know, our uh, environment where, for example, we have to react to certain perturbations or if we eventually want to terminate the motion. What, Sayun? We don't use brakes. <laughs> okay, so um, we think of that as being like three different um, features um, of basically um, the different contributions of the feedbacks only by different blending factors that we choose for them. Okay, so we all the feedback parameters are same, uh, are the same, but we just um, change the blending factors. Okay, so that was the second expectation that we had. The third one was that we would um, see similar um, solution spaces, even if we changed the, the body morphology or other operation points. So for that, uh, we changed parameters like the tendon elasticity here on top, or the body mass. In addition to that, we also changed um, the leg length or um, the compliance of the ground, but I just showed these two examples. Here we can see that um, for different con um, conditions, so for example, when one is reduced, uh, this was, would be the middle condition and then an increased condition, uh, the main areas, the main topologies actually would pretty much remain similar. So the solution space did not change. In addition to that, we also see that the uh, optima, so again, the performance optima, the location of these did also not change. So we think of that being a, um, a nice model um, that is probably very easy to learn since it shows that much consistency throughout the different conditions. Okay, that was the third expectation that we had, so we can say that uh, these were pretty much supported. Finally, um, just as a quick outlook or an overview, I want to show what we are currently working on. 
Um, so we are still not um, really satisfied with the way how the feedback uh, identification um, is done currently in the model. Um, so we try out, uh, we are currently trying out different approaches for that. Um, secondly, as a proof of concept, we try to apply this um, concept of the sensor motor maps also in a ho uh, hopping robot. Um, not a fancy one as we saw yesterday, um, but um, still an SEA-driven robot. And finally, um, we applied um, uh, ground-level perturbations to the model, as well as um, asymmetric leg designs or neural processing um, to further explore how robust the system is against these kind of conditions. Okay. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank you and uh, just want to let you know we also have a poster which is somewhere hidden upstairs. Um, please come around. There are also results that I didn't show in the talk. Yes. Question? Thank you. Uh, did I get that right, that all your feedback was, were all these gains all positive or all negative? Mm -hmm. And if so... May I shot? Uh, just for... We have one second. Uh, yeah, you, you're totally right. Um, in that case, um, what I didn't say is that we, um, since we restrict values uh, from being zero to one, and the activation signal that we send to the muscle should also be in that range, um, only positive feedbacks uh, would result actually in um, kind of hopping behavior. The velocity feedback did not result in any hopping behavior for positive as well as negative. However, if we change the, um, the overall map, so the, we, we also tried to investigate um, how this would look if we would, for example, use inhibitory reflexes, um, the solution space then changes a little bit. Um, However, we think that actually in the, in the space that we've been, um, actually we saw the best results. So in terms of hopping performance as well as efficiency. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. There was, yes. So uh, in the slides you showed at the end with the parameter variations, um, in some of the cases that approached the limits of the space, like the infinitely stiff tendon and the light mass, mm -hmm. uh, it began to violate your island's yeah. assumption. So what yeah. can you say about that? Yeah. Um, so these conditions um, were, so first they were like uh, very shortly above the minimum leg length uh, or hopping height that you would see. So very, how do you say, um, uh, energetically almost neglectable stages. Um, but, um, yeah, you, we do find um, stable solutions in there, um, but all of them are related to, um, let's say, an um, energetical consideration. So the light mass, for example, in that case, the um, capacity of the muscle to generate, um, you know, to inject energy is higher in relation to the body mass. Um, or in the case of the stiff tendon, um, it's also there. Um, it's, in that case, it has a little bit to do um, with the operation point of the muscle. Uh, so it, it, it has to stretch more because the tendon is stiffer in that case. Um, and um, that requires actually that the muscle is, um, you know, injecting more energy afterwards in the push-off phase. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, one more. So um, you spoke about the blend, blending variables of the different feedbacks, but I guess the question is, you also had like other gains that you applied before that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how uh, were they equal gains, or were they biased in one direction yeah. or the other? Yeah. I, I kind of left it out because of time constraint, but you're totally right. So what we did is um, for the triangle, uh, we in the we isolate um, we used every isolated feed, feedback pathway to um, actually optimize that particular feedback gains. Right, so we just considered force feedback first, then we optimized that for hopping performance, for example. Um, and then we used these feedbacks, feedback um, gains, and um, based on that, we basically um, scaled everything down so we can also fill in the areas in between the triangle. Um, however, that would somehow um, indicate that actually uh, we, we as humans, for example, would um, start doing learning that we would first just learn one feedback pathway and then secondly, once that is done, for example, or also in parallel, um, we would learn the second one. However, I think that's not really true because we already have a, a rich information, right? We already have multiple sensory in, uh, signals. Um, so we won't learn them in an isolated manner. 
So that was um, the first teaser that I wanted to show that we also currently um, want to, to optimize all feedback parameters in a blended contribution, uh, where we already have, you know, um, not just the main axis, but the whole solution or the whole parameter space in between. Also, can I ask a follow-up? Sure. Okay. Um, you also had earlier earlier on in a slide where you were blending feedback with a feed forward signal, mm -hmm. where it was like one minus one and plus the other, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a little bit more about that, where like what happens if you have more feedback versus more feed forward or something? Yeah. Um, so in, in our studies, we kept, uh, left that out. Um, so we neglected any kind of feed forward. Um, we just considered feedback. Uh, however, um, well, it's basically in there because it would show that where the, the feed forward would go in. Um, I can relate it to the uh, original model from Hartmut Geier. He actually used also that value as a constant um, feed forward stimulation. Um, and he um, basically shows how the solution space is in there for the individual. Uh, so the non-blended um, solution. So there, we, there you can see how feed forward and feedback actually uh, mix this into like a steady state hoping behavior. Okay. All right. Thank you. And you can also view the